Welcome to this bite-sized video for the Digital Support Services T-Level, where we'll explore Task 2 for the Digital Support Employer Set Project. The Employer Set Project consists of a series of tasks designed to assess the five assessment objectives shown. And this skills assessment is set and marked by NCFE, where students will need to apply the core knowledge and demonstrate the core skills from the specification. The Employer Set Project, or ESP, is conducted during a two-week assessment window, which will be available during the summer and autumn terms. The tasks are designed to replicate the real-life industry experience, and we used an employer and industry experts when developing the ESP in order to achieve this. This video will focus on task two, where students will be involved with an information gathering interview, and will be assessing those three assessment objectives highlighted. Assessment objective one, two, and four. With AO4, focusing on communication and use of English skills. Task one would be completed by students before moving on to task two, which is scheduled by you, the provider, during the rest of week one. With the task lasting two hours and 10 minutes, conducted during a supervised session. And if students have any access arrangements or reasonable adjustments, such as additional time for assessments, then you should apply that internally and increase the task time by the relevant amount. And while you are given a window to schedule this task, it's important to note that all students must complete the assessment on the same day. With the assessment materials only being available and accessible to students during the supervised session, so do take account of this and ensure you have secure storage areas for the student seven. Internet access is permitted should students wish to research anything to help them when constructing their interview questions. But you must ensure that privacy mode has been disabled with policies applied to prevent students from deleting their browsing history. And the interview will need to be audio recorded. So do ensure you have suitable equipment and resources to facilitate this. In task two, students will be presented with an issue that they need to design a solution for. With 12 marks in total available, and students are also assessed on their English skills within this task. But the use of English is marked holistically with its own marking scheme. So the examiners will award a maximum of four marks for English skills but it's based on the student's performance across tasks two, three, and four. As for the brief itself, students are given limited information about the issues or needs of the business. And so this task is about finding out the necessary information via a simulated interview, with this task having three parts to it. The first hour is for students to research and prepare questions for the interview in order to better understand the business's current resources, issues being faced, and their requirements. Then they will have a 10 minute simulated interview, which will be audio recorded, with the tutor often taking on the role of the interviewee. For example, the tutor might be playing the role of the network manager or the client. And then following the interview, students will need to summarize their findings for two different audiences, a technical audience and a non-tech. As all students need to sit this assessment on the same day, you may find it best to use a staggered timetabling approach to aid with this. And here's an example of how that scheduling could work. With the first student arriving at 9 a.m. to prepare their interview questions for one hour, and then a second student arriving 20 minutes later, with the third student 20 minutes after that, and so on. So 20 minute gaps between the scheduling. Then at 10 a.m., student A can begin their 10 minute audio recorded interview in a different room. And when they finish the interview, they can return to that first room to write up their emails. And this is where the scheduling of 20 minute gaps is useful, as it will give the tutor 10 minute crossover time for saving the audio recording and preparing for the next student. And you can have multiple staff involved in the simulated role play interview, therefore getting many more students done in less time. An 
and NCFV will also supply a supporting document for tutors who are conducting the interview, which will contain relevant information to address the student's questions. The 10 minute interview element is worth six marks out of the 12 available, and then up to four marks for their use of English across tasks two to four. And shown on screen are the highest band marking descriptors. With students being marked on their ability to communicate and asking logical and relevant questions. And those questions designed to provide a useful insight into the client's issues and needs. And as always, students should refer to the context and consider the scenario and information in the brief. Some advice for the preparation and interview portion of the task that might be useful to share with students can begin with how they phrase their questions, as it can be very useful to break up any technical or resource questions into smaller parts, where the answer is likely to be quite limited or direct. This should give students more time for taking notes since the questions will be more staggered. And it can be useful for demonstrating active listening, as students can summarize or double check the technical information they have. Then using more open questions when discussing the issues and their requirements can provide more opportunities for exploration of the issues and again demonstrating active listening. For example, a question like how many staff will need to access the network remotely will only give a limited response, such as a number. But by making it more open and asking about the requirements for accessing the network remotely, won't be limiting the response that could be given, because the response now could encompass other aspects, creating further discussion and exploration, such as managing and controlling the remote network, remote access to files, other remote solutions like cloud storage. And this might be followed up then with some more closed questions if necessary, helping again to show that active listening and adaptation too as they may end up discussing aspects they hadn't originally planned for on their question sheet. To aid with the note taken, utilizing tables or fields on their question sheet can reduce how long it will take them to record necessary information. This also means students can be more focused on the interviewee, and it's easier to see an overview of the information, which students can utilize then to demonstrate that active listening by summarizing and double checking during the interview. As it is students conducting the interview, it is best that they take the lead and help to simulate a real life interview, starting immediately with students actually introducing themselves and the purpose of the interview. Now, if you have students who maybe are a bit more shy or not as confident yet, then you can actually begin the interview but it's best to try and put the onus back onto them. One other aspect to prepare students for is the possibility that they'll ask questions that you don't have the answer to. Now, you might be able to provide a logical response based on the information we've provided, but other times you may not have sufficient information. In which case, it's okay to tell the students that you don't have that information available and do prepare students for the possibility of that response so that they aren't caught off guard. The other six marks for this task comes from the students summarizing their findings in the form of emails. And shown on screen are the highest band marking descriptors with use of English also being assessed. And the use of English overall is an aspect worth highlighting as students will be communicating to a technical audience and a non-technical audience and will need to amend the language used accordingly. This includes the style of language used, such as formal or informal language, depending on the email recipient, as well as using technical terms or contextualized examples. With the issues identified and discussed in the email, ensuring there's a multiple relevant aspects being considered. 
let's take a look at the two different audiences now and how the communication would be adapted. And these examples have been produced using the Summer 2022 assessment series. The implied relationship between the students and the email recipient will decide the formality of the email. If the technical audience was a line manager, for example, then there's an informal style to the email and the students can use more direct language. And if it's a non-technical audience, such as the client or the organization's CEO, for example, then a more formal style should be adopted with straightforward language used. When describing the network issues and requirements, the students should make use of relevant technical terms and acronyms when emailing the technical audience. Whereas the non-technical audience, you need to ensure that technical jargon would be avoided with different aspects, given a suitable context or contextualized example to aid their understanding. And for ongoing preparation, students might find it useful to keep a glossary of key terms or glossary of key concepts, with a suitable description given for both a technical audience and a non-technical audience. We hope you found this useful and have a better understanding of task two, and do see our other bite-sized videos that form part of this Employer Set project series. Thank you.